I got my Bobcat for $27,000 and I've looked online and the MT100s that I'm seeing are a lot more. So I don't know if Bobcat made some changes or improvements, um, but honestly, for solving the problems that they created with this machine, it shouldn't make the price go up by $10,000. But things that have frustrated me about the machine, um, the radiator, uh, overflow nozzle where it comes out, you know, the main radiator neck. This is the outlet right there, but used to be plastic. And uh, I'm going to give you a little light here. Okay, so if you can see, it's not an outlet now, it's a screw. So I broke that little plastic piece off and had to. go. There's a little hole in there. I had to drill that hole out bigger and I screwed this bolt into it. The guy at Bobcat said, oh just use some plastic weld epoxy or something and put it back on there and I could not get the epoxy to stick all the way around and squish it. So I don't know why but I just threaded that in and if it doesn't seal very well I can uh, I can take it out and put like some thread sealant or permatex or something on there, um, but that's just the overflow bottle. So, but you can't fix that without getting a whole new radiator, and that outlet is super fragile and plastic, and it's so hard to get off this hose. And once they put that hose on, um, best I can tell, it's never coming off. Now I don't know. Maybe if you warm it up um, and get it nice and soft and pliable. Uh, with a heat gun or something, but it was very cold outside when I was working on this thing, and that thing snapped right off. Um, you know, the access doors on the side of the Bobcat don't open, they only open just a little bit. Uh, you, you need a, a socket wrench, you know, to get the bolts off. And they have a special little collar in there that's designed to allow the door to turn um, when the bolt is tightened in uh, and it just it makes no sense because you have to remove the bolt that works as a hinge and it's got this special little sleeve and they went through all that trouble and then the, the door collides with another bolt in the side of the machine and just defies all logic that someone would have bought someone went out and said all right we're going to order 50 million thumb screws and uh, they use the thumb screw that does basically it does you a little bit of good because you can get the access door to slip open enough to fit your hand in to drain the, uh, the fuel filter uh, but you cannot do your oil change on the other side and that's got the same setup over there and really those access doors should be able to be, I mean that's just silly that uh, really is uh, but maybe they've solved that in the later model I don't know the spark arrestor plug on my Bobcat was impossible to, to loosen, to remove for the uh, you know periodic maintenance uh, where you cover up the, the muffler while the machine is running and it pushes the sparks out the, the plug hole. Uh, it's a brass pipe plug, it goes into the bottom of the muffler and on mine I could not get it off. Um, there's a tiny little access window this big and you can get your 7 sixteenths wrench in there and it's a square head pipe plug um, but I was able to get my wrench in there um, and I was at the right distance away to actually use the wrench to remove that pipe plug but there's no way you're going to remove that pipe plug at least not on mine um, and the best I could tell it was either a, a issue with um, heat soak you know locking those components in together or it was over tightened from the factory. Either way, come on. Stupid, stupid thing. It's built into the periodic maintenance and if it locks up again because of heat soak, the only way to get it off is to remove the muffler. And I guess it's probably not a horrible idea that, that you would have to remove the muffler every so often. But with that pipe plug, I guess I'll just say uh, 
you know, maybe it just needs to be lubricated a little bit, you know, to guarantee that it comes off. You know, it's a straight hydraulic machine, so there's no uh, computerized chips or anything like that or software updates, firmware updates, which is really great because, you know, honestly, who wants to deal with firmware updates on a Bobcat? It's an engine with tracks. I mean, it's not, it's not uh, a computer. You don't need to upgrade it. You don't need to download your latest version of Facebook onto the Bobcat. Uh, so I, I scoff at that stuff. You know, if you started a company that didn't have microchips in your equipment at all, um, you could prevail, truly. Because people don't want to deal with that. You know, on the job site, you want everything to be strictly mechanical as much as possible. That whole thing of plug-in a computer, plug-and-play diagnostics, that's for dealership benefit. That's not for the customer's benefit. And I think for machinery, I think most of us know we're going to be doing our own repairs because we can't give up the machine for weeks at a time. Um, but, the, you know, the MT100 has been uh, a tremendously useful machine. Uh, usability and functionality is extremely high very 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 good um, I have the narrow tracks they do tend to slip just a little bit in the winter time when I'm trying to do a zero turn or I'm trying to steer and so I'll have to go straight to engage both tracks and move to a better spot for spinning um, but but I haven't been stuck yet in it I've never had to use the bucket to aid me in getting out of a spot um, and just be aware of moisture moisture and cold and ice obviously can cause uh, slipping and hazards, um, but the the design and the manufacturing work that was done leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, but that being said, I still think I'd rather have the Bobcat than any of the competitors on the market. It's a very well thought out machine. Um, there's a lot that has a lot going for it. You know, someone sat down and they said, "What's the very best?" of this component that we can put in, what's what's the best of that. And they did get some major things right about what their customers wanted. Narrow tracks that fit inside a 36 inch gate. Uh, Kubota diesel engine is a very good thing. Kubota is a very reliable and, and good starting motor in my opinion. It's been my experience at least. And I've seen older Kubotas and they're very similar in that, that they are easier to start. They uh, tend to have fewer problems. And I met someone that had an MT-55 in a fencing company and he's had it for many, many, many years. I think 15 years or 20 years or just a long time. And uh, so they make a great, they make a great usable machine, but get ready to be aggravated when you work on it. Now that being said, I think you know everything that you buy requires you know a a modicum of patience because uh, there's going to be a learning curve as far as the ins and outs of a machine and how to get to everything. It's the same with a car or a truck, and with this Bobcat, of course, it's not too helpful when you're lit, when you're in the grass or the mud or a hill. To, be, to have to be working on the Bobcat. And that can happen, you know. It, uh, your work environment becomes your repair environment. Uh, and there's things that you can do to make that easier, but just remember, once you've purchased uh, a machine, you've become a mechanic. Once you purchase a diesel engine, you've just become a mechanic. Uh, you don't have the choice because um, you bought into something that requires maintenance and when it needs its maintenance it's kind of like a woman uh, it wants to be your number one top most priority and it has to get taken care of for everything to be okay but just be aware of that fact um, keep tools with you it doesn't hurt to have a floor jack with you all the time when you're when you're doing trucks and, and machinery um, <laughs> It's funny to say, uh, but a lot of the stuff on the Bobcat, you can't get uh, access to it unless you jack up the um, 
machine and uh, and remove the access plate on the bottom. So uh, another thing that is definitely your friend with the MT100 is a uh, you know a set of ratcheting wrenches, ratcheting flex head wrenches, um, electric impact, electric ratchet, you know impact sockets and extensions all around, quarter inch set electricians tools um, I mean like I said when you buy this thing you commit to being the mechanic because unless you want to go every time there's a little issue you want to go to the bot you want to transport it to the Bobcat dealer and have and then wait for their ba backlog before you get served uh, and then, of course, then it's a mystery whether you're even going to have to pay. It might be under warranty. They might say it's your fault, whatever. Um, I had a hydraulic hose blow on mine. I, I was loading wood, and I, I wasn't being careful. On my tractor, when I use the bucket, you know, the boom, uh, pieces of wood will sometimes fall over onto the, uh, the bracing components of the boom. And, uh, you know, my hydraulics aren't really very protected on the, uh, on the tractor. But uh, for some reason, I guess maybe the distance, everything is farther apart, and so the pieces of wood usually just fall down through. Uh, but on the Bobcat, I was actually, uh, I was tilting my bucket one way or the other, and a piece of wood had got wedged in there, and I crushed the wood directly into the hydraulic hoses. And I damaged one of the fittings, and I had to replace a hose that was like eight feet long or six, seven feet long or something. And I had to disassemble like the the, the I had to lift I had to to gain access to the hydraulic hose. I had to lift up the um, uh, you know, the top panel on the Bobcat. Uh, you can't actually really lift it up very far without taking off the handle brake, the hand brace, which is like a, a, a frame that's meant for you to hold on to. It's like a tube, and it's kind of nice, but the only way to get that off is with a ratcheting wrench with the boom arms down. And I locked it because I was up at the time, and so I, I was squirting hydraulic fluid. I raised the boom, and I put my brace out, my little uh, safety brace, and I lowered it onto the safety brace. Once you put it on the safety brace, you really don't have access to those three-quarter bolts that go up from the bottom and hold that handlebar on. So you're kind of in a jam. I mean, if you have like a like if that machine wouldn't start, for example, or if it was totally out of fluid, and I wanted to get that part off before I go to the store to make sure I get the one that's the right length, and then buy my hydraulic fluid at the same time. Well, what if I was completely out of hydraulic fluid? What if I had to drive a vehicle to a repair location nearby? And, uh, and I couldn't, um, I mean, you, you can see uh, the harms that would happen because of that. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, you would lose all your fluid and then you would have to make two trips to your hydraulic supply. You wouldn't be able to do it in one trip because you would need to go get hydraulic fluid to be able to move the boom to gain access or whatever. Uh, so all I'm saying is, and of course, then if the machine wouldn't start for whatever reason, then there would be other issues associated um, if you, you'd have to have another another machine to lift or move the boom, uh, so you can see how quickly you can get into a jam with one of these things, and uh, there's really no way out of it. I mean, other than uh, you know having literally an entire hydraulic technician's shop and small repair equipment repairman's shop with you at all times, which is would be a massive uh, amount of stuff. Um, but I I got the I got the hose and I ran the hose through the the boom arm which is where Bobcat runs it through so it's all protected uh, and that was great and I got that in there and you know I had to raise up the panel uh, j just a little bit and just jam my arm down in there and I had to take wrenches and there's no access where all those um, things go into the side of the valve control. Um, I, you know, there's like a bunch of hoses connected to it on the side. And so if you, you want to get to the bottom hose, everything is obstructed from underneath, uh, because of other components that are there. And so you actually have to take the upper hoses or this, you know, the hoses that are most available off to get to that other hose that's lower down. And you might be able to do it with like a crow's foot or something like that. But I remember it was like zero degrees out that day and I was freezing and I could not do it with gloves because of uh, where everything was and or a jacket. I had to take my jacket and my gloves off just to gain access inside there. 
Um, so it was an unpleasant experience at best. And uh, of course I got it back together and I learned my lesson the hard way. Uh, but do not let pieces of wood or metal or rock or anything like that fall down onto uh, the, you know, the uh, power, supply, power supply, hydraulic components, the boom arms and stuff like that, the piston. Remember you have a piston in the middle and it's only partly protected. So, um, you know, protect the hydraulics. And uh, I definitely recommend learning how to take it apart as you go along, as you have little issues. Uh, figure out how stuff comes apart. Do your periodic maintenance. And, uh, you know, you should be able to um, make the best of the machine that way. I spent significantly more time enjoying this machine than being frustrated with it. Uh, but when I do have to work on it, I tend to get frustrated. Um, I had uh, one of the bolts right in the middle of the top panel. Uh, had, you know, it just stripped out the threads underneath there and I think I'm going to end up taking a nut and sticking it on, on there and, and wire welding it on, wire feed welding it on uh, because I don't like having that middle, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I put the bolt in there and it stays in. Uh, people complain that they use the mechanical brace, but that's a very clever solution because you don't ever need to replace it. It's there forever. The hydraulic thing you would have to replace. Um, so, you see there's, a, there's your Kubota non-emissions engine. Um, I had something happen to this uh, grease zerk right here. Early on, there was like a rock that fell in there, and it damaged the zerk. And I had to go in there and like re-thread it. I think I used an upsized zerk and drilled it out and put a bigger zerk uh, thread in there. Um, Let's see, what was I going to show you? I don't know where the coolant goes, but this coolant always seems to get low. <laughs> I don't know where it goes. Like I said, it's not leaking out the Bobcat. Um, so this thing right here is really fragile and mine broke just from driving the Bobcat. This is generic. You'll find this on a lot of equipment. Um, so when you want to lift this panel up, there's a bolt coming up from underneath here, right in there, underneath. And to get the bolt for this middle one right here, you have to go in from underneath this. So you have to go all the way in here and go up through all these lines and hoses to get that one out. So it's aggravating. Or wait. Oh, you get it from this side actually. Yeah, you get it with the hood open. And then once you take this handlebar off, then you're able to do the other cool stuff. Like uh, taking all these bolts out for this panel. And then the whole panel lifts up a good like six inches or something and gives you access to work in there. Um, my gauges all did this. They were all loose. I've had to replace that one and that one, and then this one I'll have to replace. But this one, they all have electrical connections. That's how they work. They're electrical. And they've all failed because they were connected poorly from the factory. And I went in and I checked these. And yeah, the gauges were too loose when they were installed, and that was the problem. Um, what else to show you? Well, I went ahead and wired myself a light. Um, so I needed a uh, power and ground over here. I really didn't need to go off the battery. I could have gone off of uh, the fuse box. Right there. That shiny metal thing is the fuse box and it has two bolts that hold it on. And God help you, because that top bolt is almost impossible to get back in. It's the bat. It's a bad angle, and uh, I lost mine and had to use a custom bolt. I used a custom bolt, <laughs> bolt plus uh, washer on the bottom there. I wired myself this tractor light for seventeen dollars. When the uh, the light bar from Bobcat is like eight hundred dollars, and all it is is an LED that mounts on here. But let me tell you, from the operator's station, you want to be able to reach the light to adjust it if you're going to use a light that has a single beam like this 
the LEDs tend to point out straight so you would need LEDs going in all directions um, or you can just get one of these which is $17 that's like a blazer conventional type light um, but I wanted it to mount here and that the, the bracket just has a hole in the middle so you could use any bolt on any surface to mount it but the bolt right here seemed like a good spot but that makes the machine wider with the light and I have to be able to fit through gates and then this one when I opened the door it was colliding with the light and if I had the LED version of this light I wouldn't have that problem but I wanted to get the cheap one and this one also has a round face on it and so it points out in all directions like a they call it a trapezoidal pattern but this is for tractors and that was what I wanted um, and so yeah and so and as far as my wiring I just did this for now I could go back and change that later if I want to um, so yeah and then uh, once you have a couple switches on here you run out of space you know I want to put my light switch in one of these spots I have to order the switch from Bobcat um, but yeah they sell you those and then uh, they're not cheap looks like there's another spot for a switch right here too that's probably the better spot for a light switch um, yeah so right now I just have it set up where if I want light I'll just take this fuse and stick it into my inline fuse my fusible link hopefully that summarizes some of the major stuff that uh, matters about this machine and what my experience has been and the good and the bad and I can't tell you whether you should buy it but those are just the things that I've had to deal with alright so good luck out there and and I wish you all the best on your decisions